In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use a camera on a mobile device in Katana's shop floor application as a barcode scanner. This enables your operators that are using the shop floor app to scan the ingredients that they're using when they're completing their tasks to report the quantities consumed. Now, even though we've already covered this using a barcode scanner and a label printer for our green beans in a purchase order receiving workflow, we're going to use the same example from that video in this video as well. And what we did in the last video was we created a barcode label and scanned into inventory our green beans, which have an internal code as well as a batch barcode. This batch barcode, which was assigned during the receiving process. And what we're actually going to do in this use case is we're going to use the shop floor application, which is provided to your operators to complete a task but also scan the specific material that's being used in that task, while also, also at the same time using the barcode scanner to record what batch those ingredients were consumed from. To do this, uh, you'll need to make sure that a couple of settings are turned on in your shop floor application. Notably here in the settings screen, you'll find shop floor app. And then the first one where it asks consumed ingredient quantities, from the operator when a task is finished. So in our example, we have created a manufacturing order to make a planned quantity of two units of our 500 gram Brazilian roasted coffee beans. Now these items are also a batch trackable product. So once we have completed the manufacturing order, either beforehand or afterwards, we have had to have signed, assigned a batch number to them. And when that batch number is assigned, we can also print out the batch barcode label to put directly onto the finished product, which will be batch trackable, where you can also consume that, for example, when you're completing sales orders. Now in this example, uh, on the ingredients list, you can see we are using the green coffee beans, which are here. Um, I presently only have one on the ingredients list. I did that just for simplicity's sake, but in real life, of course, you would have potentially dozens or uh, in some cases, hundreds of ingredients that would go into this process. And I'm going to explain why barcodes are handy and useful, especially when you have those types of use cases, because you can use barcodes on the items that you're uh, consuming in the manufacturing process as a way to look it up in order to identify it more quickly. Now here in the operations section, I only have one operation so it's not too complicated to explain. Uh, this operation is assigned to Mark, and you can see that it's the Brazilian roasted coffee pack, 500 grams here for two pieces, manufacturing order 14. And that's basically where everything begins. So looking at it from Mark's perspective, his job will be to consume certain ingredients in his manufacturing process and also record how much was used. In our case, we're supposed to consume one kilogram of the green coffee beans to perform this process. Now over here on the right, where I have a simulated version of the shop floor application on a tablet, you can see these are the tasks that are assigned to Mark, and these are the associated manufacturing orders for which they're from. If you click into one of these, you can see that there are a list of ingredients. Now, when it comes to using uh, the barcode scanning functionality, you can have all of the ingredients listed here inside of the manufacturing order, which Mark as the operator would be able to see. But if he needs to look something up, he can turn on his camera and scan a barcode in order to bring up a short list of those items. Now, unfortunately, in my case, I only have one in this scenario, but actually, uh, if you had dozens, for example, you can scan the item that it applies to and then bring it up relatively quickly. I'll turn off my camera for now and we're going to do this as a simple example. So if we go here to the camera option and turn the camera on, you'll see my face turn up here on the camera. But what I want to show you is that this is the barcode for the item reference. And this is 10077. And when that gets scanned by your camera, it should automatically ring up. 
And there it is, just like so. So you can see that since this is 10077, you'll note that it appears here in yellow to identify that this is the item that was selected as a result of scanning it. Now also, your uh, team members can use the add ingredients option in certain cases where they would need to add, let's say, an extra ingredient or substitute an ingredient for a manufacturing order when they're consuming those items. And they can also use the camera here in order to look up as well as add an additional ingredient into the manufacturing order, which would be utilized for its consumption. So that's how it works when it comes to looking up items that are on your ingredients list, but also how to add ingredients directly to the ingredients list of a manufacturing order. Why do we have this available for our operators? Well, it's primarily there in case, let's say, uh, additional comments might be added to the manufacturing order, such as in the notes section. And if your operator might be doing a custom manufacturing process, they can actually add uh, any ingredients to the manufacturing order, which are specified for that custom element. So that's just one of many use cases where this would apply. It could be also applied for substitute materials and also any materials that might have accidentally been uh, not added to the manufacturing order. Okay, so going back to the main page, let's say that Mark is going to go ahead and start the process, and he would choose the start option here, and then that will update the manufacturing order. When he chooses finish, this is when he's asked how much of what materials were consumed in the manufacturing process. Now again, if this manufacturing order had 50 items, you would see 50 items here and you could go through the list and hit the checkbox. This is ideal for any customers that are not using barcode scanning, but if you have a large number of items on your items list, then you could also do the exact same thing where you would scan to identify which one is to be consumed. And we would click the scan option here. It would then bring up the uh, page like uh, camera like so, and then you would need to scan this barcode back into your inventory to be used. And you see what it has done here then is it's uh, highlighted it with the checkbox indicating that that's what's been scanned. It will automatically pre-fill the quantity that was expected to be used. But what you can do here as the operator is update the quantity that was consumed, so maybe use 1.5 instead of the expected one kilogram of green beans for this process. And then when it comes to the batch tracking of that item, we also have a batch barcode available for the operators to use on the same uh, printout of the barcode label. Now what we wanna do is use batch 10111 as the one that we're going to be drawing down from. So when you highlight this section here and choose the camera option, the camera will open up. And once it's open up, this will be the barcode that is used. And there it is. So it will select 10111 and specify the batch number as beans number nine. And here we would put in the quantity consumed from that batch. Now, if you're consuming from multiple batches, you can just as well easily add another batch here as required, and you should be good to go. And that basically, in a nutshell, is how you do it from that perspective. And then once it's been marked as uh, completed here, you can then specify what is the total finished quantity of the goods. I'll keep this simple for now and choose two because that was the planned quantity. And here we would select finish. And then that task would drop off the list. And then what would be left over for you to do now is update this manufacturing order with a batch number so you can print that up and label the final goods that are actually completed. So here's your actual quantity, but the batch number is showing uh, nothing yet because we need to assign it. So I'll hit OK. And so if we go to the make screen, and we are back in our uh, manufacturing order list and we open up manufacturing order 14. This is where we need to either assign a pre-existing batch number to this manufacturing order or create a brand new batch number. 
So I'll make a brand new batch number in this case. Let's say 006. And once it's created, that's when it will automatically generate the batch barcode. So remember, we had a barcode uh, auto generation functionality that's currently turned on for our Katana account. And then that barcode gets generated as 10112. You can then specify an expiration date and then hit confirm. Just like so. So now that this manufacturing order has an assigned batch number and batch barcode, we can go ahead and print out with our label printer the barcode labels that would be put on this particular product. You would simply do that by going to the print option, choosing barcode label, choosing the barcode itself, and hitting the print option here. And then it would print out two copies of those labels, which you could put on the two items that were automatically generated for your Brazilian roasted coffee packages that were made in your manufacturing order number 14. And that in a nutshell is how you use the barcode scanning on the shop floor app, how you would ring up and consume certain materials, whether also with those materials having batch numbers applied to them, and then linking that directly to the products that you would then complete on your manufacturing order, which you can also label with your label printer from the manufacturing order that was just completed.